Okay, so the next one is feminist theory. Feminist How might theory. that relate to um, aspects that we find in those books and the TV show? Um, I think this is quite a complicated one because Game of Thrones is 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 a bit of a um, a bit of a dichotomy mm -hmm. in terms of feminist theory. I think that there are a lot of interesting and very empowered female characters. Yeah. Um, so you've got, for instance, um, characters like Arya and um, Brienne mm -hmm. um, and uh, Yara Greyjoy or Asha Greyjoy yeah. in the books, yeah. um, all of whom are sort of um, subverting gender expectations, yes. the expectations of gender that are set um, for them within the, the parameters of the society in which they live. Mm -hmm. Um, you've also got um, an awful lot of um, empowered female leaders. You've yes. got yeah. um, Cersei, obviously incredibly powerful um, force in the story. Um, you've got Lady Olena, mm. you've got um, Alaria Sand. Um, so there are lots of women in positions of power in the story who have agency and so on. Um, but then there are other characters who don't have <laughs> that, they don't have mm. autonomy and power. You've got characters like Sansa whose um, body autonomy is literally taken away yeah. Um, yeah. when she's married to Ramsay Bolton. You've got um, the discussion of Cersei having her body autonomy taken away when she's married to Robert Baratheon. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then you've also got that counterpoint of the, the way in which the, the show is you know, arguably is, is, is designed for, for a male gaze. Yes. In its um, portrayal of, of violence against women um, as a kind of um, narrative hook, mm -hmm. um, in its um, consistent use of full frontal nudity. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, so it's a little bit of a complicated. Yeah, and like under, underlying that, all of that is that also the kind of sense that, you know, as much as we might have these sort of uh, female characters who are shown to be empowered at points in time, the world of the, the, the books and the TV show is still unquestionably a heavily patriarchal, phallocentric uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. society. So there's a kind of, again, as with the kind of conversation we're having in, with regards to post colonialism just now, mm. there's again a kind of. Um, and not there's not a straightforward way we can kind of think about it um, no. in that sense because although we have this it's complicated by other kind of facets that appear in in, in, in the course of the show and, and one of the things that I kind of find quite fascinating about um, the, the the show is those moments of kind of subversion that happen I'm thinking particularly of the kind of storylines that we find with characters like Arya whose kind of um, characterization is almost defined by her constantly subverting the kind of uh, regulatory gendered expectations mm. that are kind of placed upon her uh, from the kind of very beginning when we are introduced to her in the sort of pilot episode of the show where one of the first things we see her do is um, shoot a bow and arrow better than her male exactly. brother. Um, exactly, yeah, yeah. Then there's a kind of way in which that then kind of becomes an, a kind of a, a thread that, mm. that around which her um, storyline kind of revolves entirely is her pursuing things that the kind of regulatory ideals around gender might not um, kind of permit her to. Mm. So, and, and that I found be, has been quite an interesting uh, part of the kind of the, the, the running of that uh, narrative and story all the way through and I'm quite excited to see how that mm. will be brought to a conclusion uh, in the, 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 the weeks ahead. Yeah, yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that we need to kind of say about it, do you think, or...? Um, I think... Uh, <sighs> I mean, we've talked about this before, but yeah. I think there is something interesting to be said about um, the way in which Game of Thrones um, portrays childbirth mm. um, in relation to horror. Yes, <laughs> So yeah. I'm thinking particularly of Melisandre and the, the shadow baby yeah. um, that, that is produced as a means of um, getting rid of, of, of Renly Baratheon. Mm. Um, but then you've also got... Um, what happens to Daenerys' baby, um, mm. which is all kind of tied up with, with notions of, of, of dark magic and, um, and the, uh, the, the story kind of says that, that um, she is told that her baby is kind of born with bat wings and... Yeah, it's somehow 
being presented Monstrous, as less than human. Yeah, yeah. so I th and, and I think um, there seems to be like a kind of a pattern that, that gestures towards a notion or like a, 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 a strange correlation between mm. Childbirth and, and monstrosity, which I think is is kind of interesting. Yeah, that is really interesting because there's another kind of instance of of uh, quote unquote sort of childbirth, and we could kind of add to that. Unless you said it, and I kind of I kind of missed it. But there's also the kind of sense of Daenerys's dragons are talked about as her yeah. children, and that's another instance where uh, childbirth quote unquote as we see it happening there is brought about by a kind of a moment of magic mm -hmm. um, because. She walks into the pyre and the dragons are born in the fire mm -hmm. that she and the dragons are kind of able be able to survive. And I know it varies with it between the book and the TV show about how whether this is a one time thing, her kind of fire resistance, or whether it's a, a natural part of her kind of Targaryen lineage or something like that. Because mm -hmm. the show would indicate that, that it is something that she can do regularly, whereas the books would suggest that it was a one off incident. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, that's another instance where the kind of sort of an essentialized, gendered kind of notion around childbirth is somehow not just related with horror, but also with a kind of a moment of some kind of supernatural, supernatural body or yeah. magic. Thinking about it, you've also got um, Cersei's interaction with Maggie the Frog, which yes. is very much linked to her three children yes, and their yeah. death. So you've yeah. got this kind of um, combination of, of, of motherhood, monstrosity and death that kind of is a pattern that recurs throughout the um the story and I'm, I'm not really sure like exactly why <laughs> why that happens yeah no. but i think it's an interesting um recurring oh it's certainly they, they, there are there are enough of these things to kind of indicate that it is a pattern but mm. what that pattern means might be a question for a, a different conversation potentially yeah.